Hi everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of AWS Public Sector Summit. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We're live in Washington, D.C. for two days. An actual event with an expo floor with real people, face to face. And of course, we're streaming it digitally on theCUBE and the Cube channels. And so our next guest, Mark Francis, Chief Digital Health Integration Officer at Electronic Caregiver. Mark, great to see you. Tech veteran, in, former Intel back in the day. You've seen your ways of innovation. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks so much, it's a pleasure to be here. So we were talking before we came on camera about all the innovation going back in the computer industry, but now with healthcare and delivery of, of care, telemedicine, and how the structural systems are changing and how cloud is impacting that, you guys have an interesting solution on AWS that kind of, to me, connects the dots mm -hmm. for many. Tell us what you guys do and take us through the product. Sure, happy to do so. Um, uh, our company is Electronic Caregiver. We're actually founded back in 2009. We're based in Las Cruces, New Mexico, so off the grid. Uh, but since that time, we have been spending a lot of time and money doing foundational R&D, pilots and product development work, really to say how do you bridge that chasm between the doctor's office and the patient home in a way that you can um, put uh, a patient-facing device and equipment in a patient's home that's going to drive high level of engagement, obtain actionable curated data that's presented out to caregivers, and the caregivers can then act upon that to help direct and deliver high quality care. So basically it's the future of medicine. It's the future of medicine, right. <laughs> right. We look at medicine, we look at the future of medicine as being a hybrid model of in-person in care plus uh, remote care, and we really see ourselves at the epicenter of providing a platform to help enable that. You know, the big story here at the sub Public Sector Summit, and we've been reporting on it digitally for the previous year, is the impact the pandemic has had oh on God. the industry. And, and not just normal disruption, you know, technology, you know, startups, disruption happens. Structural change is being forced upon industries by the force majeure that is the pandemic. Education, healthcare, <laughs> and so video and data and connected oriented systems are now the, the thing, mm -hmm. structurally that's changing it. That's causing all kinds of business model innovations and, and challenges. Yeah. What, what's your take on that? Because this is real. Yeah, it is real. It, it, it's funny that this is actually my third digital health company. Um, first one was in, in uh, Silicon Valley, an uh, early remote patient monitoring company. We ended up selling it to Bosch. Uh, then I joined Intel to be part of our digital health group. Uh, we did that for five years and then did a joint venture with GE. So people have been playing around in remote patient monitoring telehealth for some time. Until the pandemic though, there wasn't really a strong business model to justify the scaling of these businesses. Um, uh, the pandemic changed that, it forced adoption, and it forced the government to allow reimbursement codes as well. And as a result of that, we've seen this proliferation of different product offerings, service offerings, and then payment models around telehealth, broadly speaking. Well, since you started talking, the music started cranking, because <laughs> this is the new music of the industry. Um, we're here on the expo floor, we've got face-to-face -face conversations going on. <laughs> And uh, I think they're turning the music down. Okay, thanks guys. This is a huge thing and I want to uh, uh, highlight even further. What is the driver for this? Because is it, I mean obviously cloud's got some benefits, but as you guys do the R&D, what's going on with the, the, what's the key drivers for medicine? Yeah, I would say two things. From a, from a technology perspective, the infrastructure is finally in place to enable this type of care to distance. Before that, it really wasn't there. Now that's there and the products that folks are used are much more affordable on both the provider side and the patient side. The main driver is um, there's a lot of underlying trends that were happening that were just being ignored. Whether it was 50% non-adherence to treatment plans, massive medication mismanagement, um, lack of professional and informal caregivers, all those things were kind of happening underneath the surface and then with COVID it all hit everybody in the face. People started using telehealth and then realize, hey, we can deliver high quality care, we can deliver value-based care, mix it with a hybrid model of telecare plus inpatient care, and it turned out that that, turn, that works out well. So I think it's now a realization that telecare not only connects patients, but solves some of these other issues around adherence, compliance, uh, staffing, and a number of other things. Yeah, and that's, this is a structural change we were talking about. Exactly. All right, so talk about Amazon. What you guys are doing on AWS, how's that all work? 
That's working out great. So as we as we launch Addy 2.0, we've built it on 24 foundational AWS and Amazon services. It's a serverless architecture, um, on, uh, a, a, which is deliver. What enables us to do is we have a whole bunch of different patient-facing devices, which we now integrate all into one backend through which we can run our data analytics, our machine learning, and then present curated actionable data to the providers. On top of that, we've also been developing a virtual caregiver that's really, really innovative. So we're using the Unity engine to develop a very, very realistic virtual caregiver that is with the patient 24 hours a day in their home. They develop a relationship with that individual, and then through that, they can really drive greater you know, a more intimate care plan and a more intimate relationship with their, their human caregivers. That's built using uh, you know, basic technology behind Alexa, Poly and Lex, as well as IoT Core and a lot of other AI ML services from, from Amazon as well. Not to get all nerdy and kind of geeking <laughs> out here because under the hood, it's all the goodness of, of yeah. Amazon. We've got serverless, exactly. you got Kinesis probably in there doing something. Yep, Who knows what's is. going yep. on there. Yep. You got Poly Lex. <laughs> This, and then, and, but it also highlights the edge. Yes. The ultimate network edge is the human. And if you yes. get the care, get care for the patient at home or wherever, on the run, whatever, yeah. you got to get the access to the data. So yeah. I'm, I imagine there's a lot of monitoring involved too. Yes. Can you take us yes. through how that works? Yeah, it's a, and for us, we, we, we like to talk about intelligence as opposed to data, because data for data's sakes isn't actionable. So really, what can we do through machine learning and artificial intelligence to be able to make that data more actionable uh, before the human caregiver? Because you're never going to take a human out of the equation. Yep. Um, but uh, we get a lot of data inputs. They're both direct data inputs, such as vital signs. Yeah. We also get subtle data inputs. So with, our, with, our, uh, with Addison, our virtual caregiver, it, uh, the product actually comes with a camera array from Intel called the RealSense cameras. And with that, we get to see subtle signs of changes in terms of gait, which might be indi indi indicative of falls, risk of falls. We can see uh, body temperature, pulse, heart rate, signs of stress, lack of sleep. Maybe that's a sign of uh, uh, adverse re reaction to a new medication. There's a bunch of different direct and indirect inputs we can take, yeah. run some analysis uh, against, and then say, hey, there's something here you might want to look at because it might be in indicating a change in health. So this is where the innovation around these bots and, and AI yes. come in, because yes. you're essentially getting pattern matching on yes. other signals you already know. So yes. using the cameras and or sensors in to under, understand and right. give the patient some signaling where they can maybe take action, call of someone course. or... Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. And the other thing, we get to, in, we get to integrate uh, information related to what are called social determinants of health. So there's a whole body of research now showing that 65% of someone's health is actually driven by non-clinical issues. So, again, issues of food security, you know, transportation, access to care, um, mental health type issues yeah. in terms of yeah. stress and stuff like that. We can start gathering some of that information too based upon people's behaviors <laughs> or for you through assessments, which can also provide insights to help direct care. So maybe when I'm doing the Cube interviews, you guys can go to work and look at me, I'm stressed <laughs> out right now, having <laughs> a great go. time here, public sector. <laughs> this is really cool. So I'll take a minute to explain the vision. Where yeah. does this go from here? I see low hanging fruit telemedicine, mm -hmm. check. Data observability for patient, for optimizing care, check. Yeah. What happens next? Mm -hmm. Industry disruption? Um, what's the, how these dominoes are going to kind of fall? Yeah, for us, the, uh, the, we really are seeing more providers and more payers, system integrators, looking now to say, how do I put together a comprehensive solution from the doctor's office to inpatient hospital to home that can remove a lot of barriers to care? Addy, which is our platform, is designed to be interoperable, to plug into electronic healthcare systems, whether it's Cerner or Epic or Athena Health, whatever it might be, to be able to create that, that ubiquitous, seamless platform for a provider to use. We can push all of the data to their platform if they want to use that, or they could use at our, our, our platform and dashboard as well. We make it available to healthcare providers, but also a lot of people are trying to age in place, and they're getting treated by private duty providers, senior housing providers, and other maybe less clinical 
caregivers, but if you're there every day with somebody, you can pick up signs which might prevent a major health episode down the road. So we want to close that circle. Our, our vision is how do we close the circle of care yeah. so that we, people get the right information at the right time to deliver yeah. the right care. So it's kind of like a health care stack, a new, a new kind yeah. of stack. So I have to ask you, if there was an IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS category, um, infrastructure as a service, platform yeah. as a service, and then SaaS, sounds like you guys are kind of combine the lower parts of the stack yeah. and enable your partners to develop on top of, is that how it works? Yes, it does, yeah. Yeah, so with Addy, the interesting thing we've done, it's designed to have open APIs for a lot of modules as well. So if we're working with the American Heart Association and we want to do a, a cardiac care module from using their IP, we could do that. If we want to integrate with Uber Health or Lyft, we could do that as well. If we want to do something with Amazon and Pillpack, it's a plugin and we could do that. So if I'm a, a patient or, or a, a loved one at home, mm -hmm. instead of going to 10 different places or use our platform and then pull up four different apps, everything can be right there at their fingertip. You could either do it by touch or you could use it voice because it's all a voice or a touch driven interaction. So just because I'm curious and, and, and for clarification, the idea of going PaaS versus SaaS, platform versus SaaS, software as a service, is, is why? Flexibility or customization? Why not go SaaS and be a SaaS application? Uh, we've talked mostly about, the, the, we've, we've gone back and forth, platform as a service or infrastructure as a service, so that's more the debate that we've had. <laughs> it's more about the scalability that we can offer, um, uh, not just in the United States, but globally as well. Um, and really, that's really the thing that we've been looking at, especially because there's so many different sources of data. If you want to provide high quality care that needs to be integrated, we want to make sure that we created a platform, not just for what we provide, but for what others in the, in the environment can provide so as well. So you really want to enable other people to create that oh, very much layer so. on top of you guys. Yes. Um, do you have out of the box SaaS to get people going, or is that just, with, with the release of Addy 2.0, now we do. Okay. So now folks go to our website and they, they contact our developer team, those tools and, the, and, and, and those libraries are available. Wow, this is an awesome opportunity. So for people out there who are wanting to innovate on you, they yeah. can just say, okay, I'll leverage your, you're the Amazon Web Services of healthcare. Well, uh, Essentially. That, that, that's a nice, uh, bold, <laughs> ambitious statement to have, but if we well, can I mean, kind of. Yeah, if, we, if, we, if we can achieve that, then uh, we'd be quite well, happy, you, and we think the industry well, you're gonna have partners, would benefit of that. Your customers exactly. are, e e yeah. it's an ecosystem play, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's kind of like yeah, yeah. AWS. Yeah. You know? yeah, and for us, what we do, COVID is a perfect example, going back to that. So when COVID hit, um, we're based in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Last winter, Las Cruces and El Paso got overwhelmed. They were at capacity. Yeah. Different healthcare systems came to us. They asked if we'd partner with them to deliver a, a, a basically a triage uh, program for folks that were coming into the ER with COVID. Yeah. So we designed a COVID at home program. So you get diagnosed, get a kit, go home, and using telehealth, virtual visits, remote monitoring, be able to stay healthy at home without doing community spread, yeah. and by making sure that you were being watched over by a care professional 24 hours a day. We did that, um, worked with 300 people, you know, knock on wood, all of them stayed healthy. We were able to expand uh, inpatient capacity by 77%. We saved the system yeah. over $6 million in, in three months. We've now been asked, and we're actually uh, replicating that in Memphis now, yeah. and then also we've been asked to do so down in uh, Mississippi. Mark, great conversation. Um, Thank you. Real quick, I'm only, I don't have much time left, but I want to ask you, does this mean that we're going to see a proliferation of in-home kind of devices to assist? Yeah, I de we, we will. Um, uh, what we've seen is a, a big pivot now towards a hospital at home model of care. So you have providers saying, you know, I'll see you in my facility, but I'll also extend capabilities so I can see you and treat you at home as well. We've also seen a realization that telehealth is more than, a, than an occasional video visit, because if all you're doing is a, replacing yeah. an occasional in-person visit with an occasional video visit, you're not really you know, changing things. Now there's a whole different sensors, yeah. AI, other integrations that come together to be able to enable these different models. For all the business school folks out there and people who understand what's going on with structural change, that's when innovation really changes. Yeah. This is structural change. Absolutely. Mark, thanks for coming on. Mark Francis, Chief Digital Health Integration Officer, Electronic Caregiver here on theCUBE. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, my okay. pleasure. Okay, thanks. more coverage after this short break. I'm John Furrier, your host. AWS Public Sector Summit. We'll be right back. <laughs>